Okay, in the, this next video session, what I wanted to cover off was an introduction to application mapping within Squared Up. So within Squared Up, there's a very powerful feature which we call Visual Application Discovery and Analysis, or because we're big Star Wars fans, we call that VADA for short. And this allows you to automatically discover and map your applications using the SCOM agent which is already sitting on your server. So I'm not going to go into anything sort of too deep dive here. This is an end user tutorial. So I just wanted to cover off the basics of how it works and what that means for you and then how you can use it yourself. All right, so how does it work? Well, this is a point in time discovery and it's carried out by the SCOM agent that hopefully is already sitting on your server. And that might be for either Windows or for Linux. And the discovery is essentially based on Netstat data. So we're going to use the SCOM agent to pull back Netstat data, which is going to give us the processes, the connections, and the ports. And Squared Up's going to do all the clever stuff to model that at the front end. What's also important about that discovery and mapping process is we've made it very easy for you to filter out what I call the noise. So Netstat is by its nature quite noisy. You're likely to have an awful lot of processes running on your servers that aren't part of your application definition. And so to be able to turn that raw Netstat data into something you can actually use to map your applications, it's important that you sort of are able to filter that out. And I'll show you how that we've done that for you. And then the last part is being able to save that application back to SCOM, really, so that you're not just discovering and mapping the application, you're saving that so you've got a definition of that going forward. And what does it mean that, that we've chosen to, to design and architect the tool this way? Well, a few things it means is that in terms of application mapping, the hard part really is already done. You as an organization have already gone through the difficult process of setting up SCOM, all of the infrastructure needed to run it, getting an agent on each of your servers and so on. That's the tricky part. And we're going to take advantage of that uh, of all that work that you've done to hopefully sort of deliver the magic of application mapping. What also um, this means, and the fact that it is point in time discovery, is this is very, very lightweight. It's non-invasive and essentially there's no overhead. So you're not putting a big overhead either on the servers on which you're running the application discovery or on SCOM itself. So it's not continuous data collection, it's just point in time, no continuous data collection, no storage of that data. And that in turn means that this is safe to put into the hands of your application teams. You don't need to be a SCOM expert, far from it to use this tool. Actually, what we want to do is move the burden of application discovery away from centralized teams like your SCOM administrator, who probably doesn't necessarily know that much about all the individual applications running in your environment, and put that discovery and mapping process in the hands of the teams that do know about those applications. Now, those teams probably don't know about SCOM. You don't need to with this tool, as I'll show you. And then just a little, little note that obviously being able to save that back to SCOM um, and defining your apps really gives you a lot of benefits going forward, makes it very easy to build dashboards on top of those applications, to target alerts, for example, to specific teams, uh, and also to pull in external data um, in the context of your applications. So before I drop into our demo lab to show you application discovery in action, I just wanted to give you a little tour um, of some of the UI around that, uh, just based on a screenshot. So this is the type of view that you see within our application mapping tool. And let me just guide you through some of what you're seeing here. So firstly, at the top here, we're seeing what I would call our mapped connections. So in this case, HTTP sys and the IIS worker process, those are the connections that are on our map. And the IIS worker process, as we see here, is connecting through to our servers, app01 and app02. I've also opened out and highlighted for you the fact that we've got a number of filtered connections. So these are filtered, so they are not shown on our map. We've deliberately chosen to exclude them. And the nature of those processes hopefully gives you an indication as to, to why we've excluded them. What we can see there is the, the SCOM monitoring agent. 
and uh, also for example I think that's an Azure monitoring agent now those processes are going to be running on every server in our environment it's not part of a sort of specific application definition it's not going to be helpful to see all of those connections so we're excluding those from our map what you can also see slightly obscured by one of those boxes but hopefully is a plus two for that HTTP sys connection and that means we've got some discovered but as yet unopened upstream connections so as you'll see when I do this live we um, discover upstream connections but we don't automatically open them but when you click that plus two you can open those out you'll see here we're surfacing the ports on which these processes are connecting so that's nice and sort of straightforward and then in terms of some action buttons that you have available to you Firstly, you can manage your global filters using that filters option. So that's perhaps typically something I would expect is best done by the SCOM admin. So those things like the SCOM agent, or maybe if you've got um, a backup service running on every one of your servers, hopefully your SCOM admin is going to do a good job of making sure those are all assigned to global filters, and that can be done using filters here. We've got a save as button, which is going to allow us to save this as an application back to SCOM. And up in the top right here, we're currently in discover mode, and we've got two other modes available to us as Vader um, view, which is just allows us to very quickly view the current health states of the servers that are part of our application map, and analyze, which is a more detailed view of current health and performance data. And just one little thing to show you down in the bottom right is you've got some zoom and fit to screen options available to you. Before I go into the demo lab, there's one more um, thing that I wanted to point out to you, which is in discovery mode, you're essentially going to see two types of entities on your map. Um, at the bottom there, we've got our rectangle. It's a uh, very normal rectangle, right angle corners. And above it, we've got a, a rounded end rectangle and there's important distinctions between the two. So let's start with SQL 04, the regular rectangle. So this regular rectangle visualization tells us firstly that well, SQL 04 is monitored by SCOM. There's a, a SCOM agent uh, on this endpoint. And as a result, we can run discovery from this. And also health and performance data uh, should be available for that. I've put should be because obviously we're reliant on the fact that SCOM is in fact collecting that sort of performance data, but essentially where you see that rectangle visualization, it's being monitored by SCOM, you can run discovery and health and performance data is available. By contrast, this rounded end rectangle, well this endpoint isn't being monitored by SCOM, SCOM doesn't know about it. And of course, that means there's no agent there. That means we can't run discovery from the endpoint. And similarly, there's not going to be any health and performance data uh, available to us. Well, what I would point out as one additional thing is that if your application is indeed dependent on this endpoint, then you should consider including it in your monitoring strategy. So we may have discovered uh, a couple of things here. This might be um, something that we should have installed the um, SCOM agent on and haven't done so already and so it's picked up a sort of hole in our strategy in that respect or perhaps it might be an external web endpoint or something along those lines that your app has a dependency on well if so that can be still be monitored by SCOM using transaction monitoring so do think about including that in your application monitoring strategy all right so hopefully that's given you a good introduction let me now just switch over to my demo lab and I'm going to run that live for you and talk you through it. So I'm just going to go to my home screen to start this next portion of the demo. And on that home screen, you'll see I've got the ability to map a new application. And just before I drop into this, let me show you one other place that you can uh, commence your application discovery from which is if I go to a drill down view, here's my drill down view of my server Web01, you'll see that one of my perspectives is app discovery. So I can launch app discovery from either there on a specific server or from here with this large plus button in my map my new application section. So I'm gonna do that here and you'll see first up, 
squared up opens out really a blank canvas to us now these are just suggestions here we can change or remove any of these but we're really just trying to put you in the um, in the sort of right context here so we can build out our maps manually if we want so for example my front-end servers I'm going to go to my trusty server web01 search through my scrum environment to find that and I'm going to put that on my map now I could continue bu building out this picture manually if I want to but now I'm going to go over to discovery automatic discovery so I click and discovery is now run on this server scrum agent fires that net stack task and our map starts to build well I'm not interested in this Windows Azure telemetry service so first off I'm going to filter that out and you can see that I can add that to my global filters or I can just filter that on this node only so filter it on this node only it's now removed and it's been taken off my map you'll see here that plus two that we saw in my screenshot and that was my unopened incoming connection so let's open those out and we can see a couple of load balancers here so f501 and lb01 and they've been put into their own distinct group or tier so that's great i can give that in turn its own name now let's go down the line to app01 and app02 we see our regular right angled rectangle here so scrum knows about these servers we've got a scrum agent on them we can run discovery so let's run our discovery on those and our map continues to build and we've discovered an oracle server here so i'll call this my oracle db that's obviously running on linux and i can run discovery on linux if i want i found a couple of sql databases so i'm actually going to put those into their own tier or group here so i'm going to call those my sql dbs here i've got uh, an unmonitored endpoint as I mentioned I'm actually going to remove that here I'm not too interested in that today and I've got a couple of external dependencies so I'm going to keep these in their own group and I recognize that EC2 address that's running in Amazon Web Services now in the case of this particular application uh, it's a sales order processing app that we run uh, we need to uh, have currency conversion as part of that and we call that from an external service so this is a good example of somewhere where SCOM can't monitor th to this directly in terms of we can't have a SCOM agent on here, but my app is dependent on this. And so I would want to include this in my monitoring strategy and probably get my SCOM admin to set up an external web transaction against that. So we've got my SQL DBs, my Oracle DB, and my unopened front end connections open those out I've discovered actually I don't just have web01 in my front end servers I've got web02 and web03 so I can run discovery on there and let's open out those connections and see what's going on here and let's also use this zoom capability that I pointed out down in the bottom right hand corner there it is let's do fit to screen and there we've got a very nice picture of our application and we've discovered that all in a matter of minutes so I've got two load balancers at the front end three web servers connecting through to two app servers connecting through to my SQL databases Oracle database and some external endpoints and you'll see all of those port connections are available to me so very straightforward to build out your application mapping and we remember that this is point in time discovery so if, for example this application has let's say maybe a batch job that runs overnight well that isn't going to display as part of our automatic um, uh, discovery because we're, we're doing this in the day um, and it's not going to run until overnight again you can add that manually so that actually is on the server I think it's AK no maybe it is MB there we go there's the server that my batch job runs on I'm gonna pop that up there I'm gonna call that uh, batch job overnight and that actually uh, connects into my app servers so I'm just gonna make that 
dependency there and we've manually built out the full picture of our application. So to point out a couple of the other things that I showed you, firstly, the ability to, once we've mapped that out in full to save that. And what we would suggest you do is click save as and save it as a monitored application. So I'm just going to call this my demo app. And as you can see, we give you some nice clear guidance here as to what's happening. So it's gonna allow you to save it as a new monitored application in SCOM. New management pack will be generated and downloaded. You then need to send this to your SCOM administrator and he'll be able to import it into your SCOM environment for you. So to do that, you hit download and hopefully you can see just down there in the bottom left hand corner of my screen, an XML file has been downloaded. That is that application definition ready to be sent on to your SCOM administrator. So a couple of other things before we finish, just gonna close that save as view, come back to my map here. We'll just go into full screen mode to get a nice full picture here. We're in discovery mode at the moment, but we can go into view mode to quickly see the health state of the objects on this map or into full on analyzed mode. And we can see not only the health states, but also current live performance data. And there that is lighting up now. So you can see, for example, if we're load balancing successfully across the web tier, the app tier, where our issues are, why we've got a warning on SQL 04 and so on. And from there, you can drill down to explore further. But hopefully that gives you a good introduction to how you go about automatically discovering and mapping your applications using Squared Up. I hope that's been helpful for you all.